In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Just like the angels, we are called to be God's messengers to others. For the times in which we fail to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, we pause and ask our Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who dispose in marvelous order ministries, both angelic and human, graciously grant that our life on earth may be defended by those who watch over us as they minister perpetually to you in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before our God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord. 
when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is your favorite style or genre of art? Everybody's got their own. Some people, for example, uh, like Impressionism. Uh, I, for one, am a person that likes the real, the realism. Uh, I like to be able to see it very directly as it actually was, uh, as it was actually intended, and to see someone be able to paint a picture, for example, uh, that might actually be the way that things exactly were, is actually amazing to me. Those people that can look at a person's face, for example, and get every single recall, every Every single imperfection, almost as if they stood there and took a photograph of the person. So because I like realistic art so much, you could probably imagine there are certain styles of art that I don't necessarily like so much. Modernism it drives me straight up a tree for a whole variety of reasons. But even some types of art that are more realistic, that begin to blend different types together, can sometimes confound me a little bit. And oftentimes it's found in sacred art too. For example, a lot of the times we tend to depict Christ or the Blessed Mother in a very real way. Our crucifix looks like a real man that's hanging on a cross, for example. However, we tend to take our culture and impart it upon those particular images. If you think Jesus really looked like that, Houston, we got a problem because he probably didn't culturally, right? Being a man that was born in the Middle East, uh, we would be uh, sort of, uh, I guess we wouldn't want to say that he looked probably more like Osama bin Laden uh, than he actually looks like some of our art. It's the fact. It's the reality, if you will. So you can imagine, if I like realism, the difficulty that I have with angels depicted in art too because uh, we do a really terrible job of actually trying to depict what an angel is doing some artistic art form. Uh, we put wings on them, as if they're going to soar like eagles in the sky, if you will. But there's a truth that's attached there, right? Because we're trying to talk about the non-corporeal nature of what an angel is supposed to be. We think of St. Michael, for example. He's got a big old sword in his hand, and he's got battlement and armor on. However, if you're non-corporeal, how in the world does that stuff sort of get on you? And Christmas cards. Oh, what we do with poor 
or angels on Christmas cards with their goldy locks and their glittery hair, uh, well, it really doesn't do justice to what angels truly are. But I think that if we begin to read today's sacred scripture, it helps us to develop the church's true angelology in a better sense. And even more than that, it helps to put angels in the context of co-partners, if you will, of doing the work of what ministry is really supposed to be. So what is an angel? Well, it comes from the root word that simply means messenger. So what are angels supposed to go out and do? Well, they're the U.S. Postal Service, if you will, for the heavenly realm. Uh, They're actually sent to go out and constantly deliver messages to others, messages to humanity. And we see that very prominently even in the sacred scripture itself. How does Mary find out, for example, that she is going to be the one that actually bears the Christ child? A messenger, one of the archangels, is the one who actually delivers this sort of zany message that she has difficulty understanding. Uh, You see in the first reading that we heard today from the book of Revelation uh, what these messengers also do. They're not just simply delivering messages, they are co-partners. And in the book of Revelation you start to see the spiritual battle that takes place in the heavenly realm between good and evil and how angels even factor in to that particular equation. But if you start to look at what their function is, it really isn't all that dissimilar from the invitation, the call of what humanity is supposed to do too. If the root of what angels really are is all about messaging, well, isn't really that the forefront of our fundamental call as a Christian people? You're baptized, called to preach the good news to all the kingdoms of the earth, and thereby you are messengers. However, it's a little bit more difficult perhaps for us sometimes too. For one, there's the corporeal nature that we have to deal with, aging bodies, aches, pains, and all the other things that simply come with being a human being. Uh, We can't zap around, fly around, find ourselves here in one place and then very quickly in the next. Uh, But we do have co-partners, if you will. Uh, Those persons, or persons are bad words, those beings that actually exist in the heavenly realm, those angels who assist us and guide us. At this time of the year, we always have these two particular feasts, the archangels that glorify God around the heavenly realm. In a few days, we'll also have a secondary one, the guardian angels. And I always think it very interesting that one of the first prayers that we probably learn as a kid has to deal with angels, the guardian ones that we hold dear to ever be at our side to guide us in the middle of all of our difficulties. Where do we go wrong in the midst of artwork sometimes? Well, sometimes I think we read into something that's not really there. Sure, art does a really good job symbolizing exactly what it's meant to portray, but I think today's feast invites us to dig a little bit more deeper spiritually into realizing that there are other parts of creation that assist us in our world, and angels are a beautiful and wonderful part of that. Maybe that should be the invitation for us as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, to talk to those co-workers, to ask those co-workers to be with us in messaging when we go out and proclaim the good news, to inspire us by their example, but also to realize that we're not alone in it. We have co-partners in our very church, but we also have co-partners in the spiritual realm too. And perhaps if we ask their intercession to help rule, guide, guard, protect, and maybe poke us in the right direction, perhaps we'll be able to fulfill our evangelical call, even though we have to do it in the corporeal realm. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. For all of those parishes, apostolates, and institutes who are named after one of the three archangels, may they continue to seek the inspiration of these messengers from God to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For our friends and neighbors who have been affected by calamities and natural disasters, for folks in Puerto Rico, 
Bermuda, Florida, and Cuba, as they continue to repair their lives and homes from recent disaster, we pray to the Lord for those who are ill, for those who are sick and struggling. May they call upon the intercession of the angels to assist them, especially in that suffering. We pray to the Lord. For beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and for those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers of petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. Prepare us, O God, to be as your angels, to go out and proclaim your message of salvation to all of creation. Provide the needs that we place before your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offered you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offered you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating, that as these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into the presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels. For the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory, and by their great dignity and splendor you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exalted adoration, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially of the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, with the archangels, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, so we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in your sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having been nourished with heavenly bread, we beseech you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly along the way of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And as a reminder, on Thursday mornings, we have our prayers in honor of our mother of perpetual help. Most holy and immaculate virgin and our mother Mary, you are our perpetual help. 
our refuge and our hope. We come to you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ and a holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Mother of perpetual help, you continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's word, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put his word into practice in our daily lives. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives. Everywhere we meet the cross. Comforter of the afflicted, beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our sufferings. Or if it be the will of God that we should suffer so longer, help us endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your son and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves to the care of our Heavenly Father. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ said a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother of perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, our priests, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and in choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all of our deceased and to all the souls of the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our mother of perpetual help for all the favors we have received. Please kneel. As we pray for the sick, Lord, look upon your servants laboring into bodily weakness. Cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that, purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. 
as you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms. Be a mother ready at every moment to help us. For God, who is mighty, has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and the grace always to call upon you, mother of perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us, grant we beg you that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask through you, who live and reign forever. Amen.